Hi, and today Jamie and I are in another one of Northamptonshire's beautiful villages. This time we are in the lovely Ashby St Ledgers. At the moment we're in front of the really nice old coach house public house. Now, like a lot of North Hans villages, when you enter it, it feels like you've really stepped back in time. Uh, feels like you're miles away from any civilization, apart from the modern cars around. But in actual fact, Ashbury St Ledger's is only about um, a mile away from the A5 to the east. The nearest major town is uh, Rugby to the northwest, and we've got Daventry due south, another five miles. But let's forget about the hurly-burly of modern times and delve back into the mists of time and find out a little bit more about this historic little village. Now, like many um, Northamptonshire villages, Ashby St Ledger's was mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086, but then it wasn't known as Ashby St Ledger's. It was called Askeby, which is Anglo-Saxon for uh, the ash tree settlement or settlement by the ash trees. Uh, later on in Norman times they erected a church a little bit further down and we'll see that later which was dedicated to Saint Legarius of Poitiers so he was a French martyr. Over the time uh, it all came together and that's why it's now known as Ashby Saint Ledger's. Now, Ashby St Ledger's is, of course, full of interesting buildings, lots of Grade 2 listed and Grade 2 star listed properties, all of which have their own unique beauty, I'm sure. But my favourite of the lot is this lovely row of terrace cottages designed by Sir Edwin Lutyens in about 1908. He went on to help uh, the owner of the manor that we'll see later develop a little bit of the, the manor itself and, the, and its gardens. But these cottages are absolutely beautiful. They've got the most magnificent thatched roof that stretches the full span of the terrace. It's really quite something. Now the main street in Ashby St Ledger's it's a little bit wider than you'd expect in uh, a rural village. Normally you'd expect narrow, windy lanes and everything to be a bit higgledy-piggledy, but it's very ordered here. And the way that the buildings are set back from the road somewhat just adds to the sense of space. And there's lots of uh, green areas as well, which really sort of adds to the space and um, gives a, an element of visual splendor. They've also got some perfectly placed benches for you to sit up and soak up the historic atmosphere. So just past the beautiful church of St Legarius, which I mentioned earlier on, we come to arguably the most interesting part of the village, which is the manor house. Apart from the obvious historical architectural features and interests of the building and, and the beauty and charm of it, the manor house's walls hold some interesting human stories. The original medieval manor house came into the Catesby family in 1390. Uh, and continued be, to be owned by the same family for many years. It was expanded and added to in Tudor times, again by the Catesby family. And um, the most notorious member of that family was Robert Catesby. Now he became a leading figure in the gunpowder plot of 1605. Now according to legend, Robert Catesby and his fellow conspirators got together to discuss the gunpowder plot in the chamber of the gatehouse. Um, unfortunately, the uh, plot failed, as history records, 
and when the Catholic conspirators were identified, Robert Catesby decided to flee. But he decided to come back to the house one more time to wave to his dear mother from a distance before he was hunted down by the King's men and killed. So the manor house has passed through several families' hands over the course of time. Uh, latterly, it was purchased by Ivor Guest, who later became the first Viscount of Wimborne in 1903. Uh, and he had it and he expanded it. And this is the time that he got Edwin Lutyens to redesign much of the house and the additions to the village that we've seen earlier. Uh, it was eventually sold in 1976. In the intervening years the property went to a bit of wreck and ruin um, but amazingly the property was brought back into the guest family by the fourth Viscount Wimborne who has done a remarkable restoration on all the buildings and um, done a wonderful job. However, his most notable event in his tenure is probably the fact that he was engaged to the US pop singer Grace Jones, who nearly became a Viscountess and lived here for a while. Sadly, that wasn't to be. Uh, the fourth Viscount, Wimborne, sold it to another family member and now it's the most wonderful uh, private hire venue for weddings, providing luxury accommodation, uh, beautiful grounds and beautiful interiors. I'd really like to stay there myself. So what a wonderful, historic village. Beautiful place to live. It's the middle of the week, the middle of the day. What do they say? Only mad dogs and estate agents go out in the midday sun. Um, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Now we have lots of people naturally that want to come and live in such a village so what we are looking for are people to let us know if you would like to sell your property.